Welcome to this special broadcast. It's a part of One Heart Church and an opportunity for us to be able to share with you the power of God's Word at work in our lives and how God works in each one of our hearts and lives to accomplish what He intends. And we've been in a series entitled uh, Just in Time, Capturing the Moments in Life that Matter the Most. And today we look at uh, a very dynamic subject because it really it's the, the end story of a guy's legacy that links to another person. Uh, and if you'll think about our own lives, if we are if we're going to accomplish what God intends, we have to encounter spiritual excellence, those who spiritually have an excellent uh, commitment to accomplishing what God intends. And so today, as we continue our series, we look at what it means to reflect spiritual ex excellence. What does it mean uh, to arrive at a place where we uh, uh, encounter and understand what it is he's trying to say to us in vibrant, dynamic ways? And you're going to see today that uh, Paul, as he addresses Timothy... In 2 Timothy chapter 4, you're going to see that he begins to give clear direction uh, with regard to how and what it is that, that Timothy should do in order to be effective. Because, watch this, our Kairos moments are linked to the most effective opportunities we ever have, but we have to seize them. And when we seize them, we become effective, we are able to accomplish more, and we're able to do what it is God intends. And so, uh, as we get ready to launch into this, uh, uh, the, in the past few days, uh, I've been reflecting on what we're going to be doing during the month of March, and uh, I mentioned this on our, our live broadcast uh, l last week from our live stream. One of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be challenging you to embrace the adventure. And uh, this embracing the adventure is linked to a study of reading through Proverbs beginning March 1st through March 31st and looking and making observations of different verses that we read, application of different, of different principles that we glean, and reflection, what it is God says to us out of each one of those chapters. And so uh, you should be receiving uh, this booklet. Uh, many of you obviously are not able to be uh, in our building, so it's going to be available uh, by way of mail into your home. We're trusting the mail service to get it to you in a timely fashion, because here's what we know. We know that if we open our hearts up to God's Word, especially at critical moments uh, like we live now, and we open our hearts up to Him and we begin to watch Him work in our lives, what we discover is that He's going to guide us uh, in a much clearer, much more defined, and, and much more powerful way. And I want you to think about it in your own life as you begin to process through what we're looking at today because you're going to see we're coming to that place where uh, Paul contrasts those who want their ears tickled and those who want their hearts moved. All right, think about the contrast there. Those who just want to hear a certain thing that makes them feel good about who they are and those who want their hearts moved so they become who God wants them to be in life. And there's such a, a very distinct difference between those two. And my prayer is that as you watch this today, you'll realize that we all have the temptation uh, to have our ears tickled, to have something pull us away from the truth of what it is that God has for us. But if we're wise, what we will do is instead we'll start reflecting spiritual excellence Clearly defined, clearly defined by Paul in the fourth chapter of Second Timothy. And today as we start our look at this, uh, I want to remind you that this idea of embracing the adventure is really about driving us towards spiritual excellence. It's really about giving us the opportunity to experience what it is that God wants to do in each one of our lives. So I want to ask you a couple of questions that I hope will kind of set the tone for our thought process, because if you remember, a Kairos moment is a right critical opportune moment that God puts before us that is unique and special and has a purpose uh, for our lives and beyond the moment. Now, as you think about that, first question I want to ask you is simply this. Uh, who do you listen to when, when it comes to God's Word? When, who do you listen to regarding God's Word? Do you, do you, do you find yourself at times as somebody who, who really makes you feel better because as you listen to him, or do you find somebody who preaches the unsearchable riches of the truth of God's word? You see, what happens is, if we're not careful, there are those out there who are eloquent with speaking, but not excellent when it comes to doctrinal integrity or a biblical insight. They, they push you towards an idea instead of an insight. And it's, what's interesting is if we're inside of God's word, uh, it's, all, it's all linked to spiritual insights God gives us as we read. Whereas if we're just listening to someone's uh, concepts or thoughts or uh, ideas, it, what it does, it just causes us to um, maybe feel better about ourselves in the moment, but maybe miss the best of what God has for us. So we all should have people that we listen to who speak God's word, and it just has a vibrant, dynamic, 
powerful impact on our life. The second question I want to ask you is this. What are you looking for in the future? Because what you're going to discover today is that Paul understood that Timothy was looking for certain things. And if he were to find those, uh, they're going to be linked to his ability to excel at the things that matter the most in life. And that's why he makes it very clear that when the, when the end of the story is there, in fact, you see it, you see it you know, in verse 8, in the future, uh, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. What, what Paul was trying to say was what, what drives you to be excellent in life is to realize that God doesn't miss anything. He sees it all. He works in our lives through all things. And today, as you think about that regarding where you are and what it is that God wants to do inside of your life, I want us to look and uh, be reminded of something. Uh, because uh, this concept uh, of, of Kairos moments, we've been looking at it now for a number of weeks. And, and uh, you know, our, our Kairos moments will come as we carefully evaluate who we listen to and who we look for in life. In other words, if we are listening for the voice of God and we are being blessed by those who convey truth, what's going to happen? We are going to have the privilege of being able to watch him do amazing and powerful things in our life. So my question simply is this, who are you listening to? And what are you reading? Uh, what, are you, what are you gleaning? What insights are you allowing to become a part of your story. So let's look at a few verses, and let's just kind of see what it is God says, because I want to show you these Kairos moments. Verse 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. But look at verse 3, if you would. For the time, the Kairos, will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. All right? So what he's saying is there, there are those chosen moments that, we have to avoid being exposed to teaching that would cause us not to experience what Christ wants for us. All right? And so be wise as you think through that. Realize that what he's saying here is there are some that's going to walk away from doctrine, walk away from, from uh, key thoughts, and as a result, they're going to miss so much of what God intended for them. So let's think about that in light of the next verse because in verse 6, notice what it said. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering... And the kairos of my departure has come. Here's what he knew. The, this, his earthly story was coming to a conclusion. But his heavenly story was just beginning. Because a crown of righteousness was coming uh, and prepared for him. Because he'd stayed faithful. He'd stayed true. And I want you to think about, in light of what he says here in verses 3 and verses 6. I mean, it's so, it's so evident that, that we don't want to miss what it is that God has for us. That's why verse 8 is so important. Look at it with me if you would. Notice what it says. In the future, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will reward, will reward to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. You see, excellence is linked to Jesus. Excellence is connected to what Jesus wants to do inside of our lives. And today, think about the spiritual excellence that you can experience simply by applying God's word to make a difference in your life. It's be careful who you listen to. And as you're cautious in who you choose to listen to, be, be careful and be wise to evaluate you know, what it is and who you're looking for in life because you may be looking for the wrong person. You may be looking for someone who you think is going to solve all your problems and it may create a greater nightmare. Today, as you think about that, Paul was writing to a guy who, uh, when you look at him, there could have been a greater contrast of personality. Paul, a vibrant, dynamic communicator. Timothy, uh, a timid, quiet uh, reserved individual, both of which faithful servants to God in, in their own right. And, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is our personality type and other things uh, are not the defining aspects of our ability to achieve spiritual excellence. It's the openness of our heart and where our heart takes us. And that's exactly why that Paul does what he does. And today I want to show you just two very distinctive things that I want to challenge you to think about. The first one is this, that there is a call to balance a true reality in our lives. In other words, it's easy to spiritualize things. It's easy to say that we have figured, figured everything out. And the truth of the matter is, the real reality is uh, who we are as we process through the issues that we encounter in life. So let's begin in verse 1. And let's just see, as Paul summarizes his closing comments 
to Timothy regarding who he wants him to be and how important it is that he excels in the experiences that he has in front of him. Knowing that he's going to be gone, he realizes he speaks, he speaks with great clarity uh, in order to create an understanding of the right reality that is really, uh, he's setting the tone for the context of what he's going to face in life. And listen carefully, in the context of the culture we live in, it's so important that we understand the reality of Christ in us who is the hope of glory, who is the one who orders our steps, who is the one who numbers our days. All right, look at verse 1, if you would, with me. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with great patience and instruction. For the time the kairos will come, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. You see, Paul understood something. There was a day coming. He had no idea what life would be like in 2021 uh, for us. But the truth is we face the same dynamics that were happening oh so many years ago. So think about it with me as you look at this, this call to, uh, to a new reality. There's several things that, that he makes very clear. First of all, never compromise your calling. In other words, in your life, God's called you to accomplish something. Don't compromise it. Because if you compromise it, you'll look back and you will, and, 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 and you will end up making a mistake that will be detrimental to you. And it's interesting because you realize that what, what he says here is the greatest chances of compromise are linked to listening to the wrong voices or following the wrong people. And so it's so important for us not to compromise our calling by yielding to someone whose perspective or opinion or insight will not take you towards the cross. They'll move you away from it, all right? Second thing you see here that he makes very clear is this, uh, that, that he says you gotta live with distinctive convictions. You'll notice what he says in verse two, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, Repu reprove, rebuke, exhort, all right? And with patience, you notice he says it with patience uh, and instruction. So uh, what is he trying to say? You've got to do it the right way for the right purpose uh, to accomplish the right uh, means. And so what he's trying to say here is that these distinctive convictions that we're to live with, he identifies three of them. First of all, he says that we should uh, reprove uh, those who we're speaking to. And what he's saying here is have an understanding of what your convictions are, all right? Then he says that we should also be willing to rebuke. And what does it mean to rebuke? To warn someone. Hey, say, you know what? Be careful there. Be careful. And I can remember uh, in our uh, early years of, of children, uh, sometimes we would have uh, hot, hot items on the stove and, and you'd always tell the children, please don't touch the oven. Please don't touch the stove. And sometimes they would not listen and heed that warning. And when they touched it, the fire would grab their hand. Listen, there's a greater fire than an oven that's hot. And that is a heart that is disconnected from God's purpose. Be wise. Be wise to understand what he's trying to do in your life and let him work. All right? So he says you, you, you are willing to, to reprove and rebuke, but then you're willing to exhort. And the idea of exhorting someone is appealing to their heart, appealing to them so that they understand what it is, what it is that they need to have a clear conviction about. All right? So think about it for me just for a second. Think about those concepts. A conviction, a warning, an appeal, all of it linked to clarity that allows a person to learn how to excel in a greater fashion. Now, let's look on though, because he says a couple other things, and one thing is really, really important, uh, because in verse three, he talks about, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. All right, so here's what I want you to grab hold of, and, and, and let, let it be a part of your understanding of these Kairos moments that we live in right now. And it's simply this, recognize the signs of falling away. All right, and what he says here is that what, what happens to someone is they start listening to something that sounds fantastic, but that is catastrophic. In other words, something they think, wow, that sounds so good, but it ends up being devastating uh, to their spiritual journey. Today, be wise who you listen to, be careful what you choose to read, and be insightful when it comes to pursuing the Lord Jesus, which is exactly what he was trying to get across. He says, I charge you in the name of Jesus. I mean, I want you to move forward, right? So the first thing is, how do I come to a place where my reality is linked to God's purpose 
And the way I get there is making sure that I have the right kind of conviction, making sure that I don't compromise my calling, and making sure that I, I see the signs that are a part of what could happen if I fall away. Now, in verse 5 through verse 8, uh, it's the second thing I want you to see. So the first thing has to do with our, our, our present and true reality, what it is God wants to show us in our lives. The second thing has to do with our future. Uh, and what I want to show you is this. If a person is living in a Kairos moment, you can anticipate a truly brilliant future. You can anticipate something absolutely amazing. Look at it when we're beginning in verse 5. Notice what he said. But you be sober in all things. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. From I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time, the kairos of my departure, has come. I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. I want you to think about how brilliant... Uh, the future really is. I mean, it. It. Uh, you think about when I mean, sometimes you see a sunset or you see a sunrise, and the brilliance of it is is overwhelming. And when you go through it, you go, Man, "There's nothing like it. There's nothing like what it is uh, that I'm seeing." And and so that's what he starts to paint the picture. That his story is about to wrap up, but it's really going to be brighter. It's going to be more brilliant because the crown of that crown of righteousness is going to be a part of his story. So let's look at this. Let's just kind of see if we can understand what he's trying to get across. First of all. Uh, he says, be sober, be on the alert for every opportunity, be on the alert. Uh, because remember, earlier we talked about how important it is you don't compromise your calling. How do you avoid compromise your calling? Be alert, be sober, be very attentive to what it is that God is trying to show you. Uh, and as a result, it will guide you towards something dynamic and powerful in your life. Now, let's look on though, because he says, be alert. And then uh, he says, don't, don't quit fighting. You know, he says, I, I fought a good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept the faith. What's he saying? What's he saying to Timothy? What's he saying to you and me? It's simply this. Don't give up the fight. Be careful never to surrender what is worthwhile, what is meaningful, what is powerful. Never surrender uh, your commitment to accomplishing what God intends. Because if you surrender, it means you yielded to something. It tickles your ears. Uh, but you would never want to live that way because that would not allow you to have the spiritual excellence that God intends for life. Because one thing Paul understood was his legacy would go as far as Timothy's excellence. His legacy would not go beyond that because if Timothy chose not to live an excellent life, he would miss the opportunity to transform the world and make a difference. Thank God, Timothy kept his eyes fixed on Jesus based on what all he had been learned and taught, what he'd been learned and what he'd been taught by Paul. All right, third thing I want you to see is this. What he makes clear here, that we have one assignment, it's one key assignment, and that is be willing to share the gospel. Keep sharing the truth of the gospel uh, throughout your, your life story because what you discover is excellence comes out of what the good news does inside of each one of us and what it can do inside of someone else. And so today, keep in mind that if we are going to have a future, sharing the good news now is absolutely essential. A fourth thing I want you to, or a third, one other thing I want you to think about is this. So remember, you're on the alert. You never surrender the fight. And in not surrendering the fight, you share the gospel and you have a commitment, a willingness to finish well. Wouldn't it be cool that if we look back at our lives, you know what? I did that to the best of my ability. God moved in powerful ways. I watched him as he opened the door of opportunity and impact. You see, today, as you think about your own life, think about how important it is that you finish well. All right? So let's kind of bring this together into two final thoughts. The first one is, if we are going to have an experience, spiritual excellence, if we're going to reflect that in our lives, these two things need to become a part of our story as well. The first one is simply this, live out your life calling. Remember the first part, we said don't compromise your calling, your life calling. This side of it says, man, live it out. Live out your calling. I mean, he said, I've been poured out, uh, and I, I've done it all. I've done what I'm supposed to do. And don't you want, at the end of your journey, go, you know what, I did exactly what God called me to do. And as a result, I rejoice in that. One final thing I want you to think about, then I want to ask you a question uh, as it relates to all we looked at today. When, when you read the last verse, verse 8, you realize that, that, he, that he makes a statement, but all who have loved his appearing and, and those who are longing to see him, 
all right? And so when you think about the brilliance of our future, it's looking for his return when he'll come back. And I can assure you this, based on all that's transpiring across our world, the Lord could return at any time. And if he does, would we be reflecting spiritual excellence in our life that day, that week, that month? My prayer is that we would reflect it in a dynamic and amazing way uh, and that Jesus would say, well done, and the crown of righteousness would be a part of our story. So as we bring this together, let me th ask you to think about with me uh, the whole concept of what, what it means to be excellent with, with this simple question. What does your life reflect today? Because if your life is not reflecting the excellence that God intended, what happened? Where did you go? What step did you take? What transpired? And my prayer is that you're going to understand that the life of excellence that God intends for us. And, and, and really, if you think about Thessalonians, over and over again, Paul kept saying, excel still more. What, keep being excellent. Keep learning more. Keep gleaning more. And during these Kairos moments that we've had every single week, you know, we go back to the very beginning of Ephesians chapter 5, uh, where it says, you know, be careful how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise men, making the most of the time for the days are evil. And listen, we live in a day where there's lots of things that we can identify as being in the camp of what is evil. But what we must be careful to do is identify in our own hearts with what is holy. Uh, because as we live a holy life, we conquer anything that comes at us. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to speak to your heart uh, today. And may this message encourage your heart. May it, be an, may, it, may it allow you to think through, you know what? Maybe I've slacked off there and I need to be excellent again. Maybe I need to rethink how often I share the gospel, who I, who I share the good news with. He's willing to guide you to the most excellent life. You just have to be willing to choose him. Let's pray together. Father, we bless you. We praise you. Thank you. Jesus' amazing name that allows us to experience life in the most excellent way. You give us peace and joy, hope and love. You give us direction. You guide us to discipline our hearts. You guide us to direct our steps. You guide us, Lord, to experience you. So, Lord, we bless you for that. We thank you for what you're going to do in our lives during these days that are right in front of us. Help us, Lord, to not miss our Kairos moments. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to look at your word today. In Christ's name, amen. Well, I want to thank you for listening so attentively today. And my prayer is this message will sink deep into your heart and you'll arrive at a place where you're able to go, you know what? That's what I want. I want to be excellent no matter what. And let me remind you that we'll begin uh, the first day of March with embracing the adventure. Uh, and on that Monday, I know it's going to be a great time for all of us. And we're going to take the time to reflect on what he says to us as we walk through the 31 days of March inside of Proverbs in anticipation of what Easter is going to mean to each one of us. And we got great plans in store for you at Easter. We have great plans in March for our children. Uh, great days are ahead of us. And I can tell you this, to go back to what I've echoed since March of last year, at the other side of all this journey we're going through, we'll be better than we were when we started. The best is yet to come. God bless you. Have an amazing week.